Integrity versus Corruption In the realm of contemporary discourse, few concepts pose as stark a contrast as integrity and corruption. Often seen as antitheses of each other, these two themes illustrate the discrepancies in today's global ideas, both influencing and reflecting the condition of modern societies. Integrity, first and foremost, is an aspiration, a striving towards a higher ethical ground. It is a dedication to the principles of truth, honesty, and honor, in both private and public life. The person of integrity treats others with respect, consistently acts according to their moral compass, and remains unwavering, even when challenged or tempted. They're often viewed as a beacon, guiding society toward the pinnacle of moral and ethical standards. However, it's worth noting that public perception of an individual doesn't always align with the individual's true character. Both vilification and undeserved glorification are possible, and these manipulations are frequent occurrences. The persona, the image we see, can be carefully curated, sometimes bearing little resemblance to the person's true essence. Furthermore, integrity itself, while admirable, can often seem like an abstract ideal, somewhat detached from the realities of day-to-day life. In the pragmatic course of living, people act in various ways, constructively or destructively, rationally or irrationally, and any combinations thereof. Sometimes, individuals might firmly believe that they embody integrity, but upon closer scrutiny, their actions might suggest otherwise, and vice versa. The presence or absence of integrity can be nebulous, multifaceted, and at times, contradictory. The interplay of these dimensions of human behavior often blurs the line between integrity and its absence, rendering it more complex than a mere binary. In our contemporary world, integrity is often threatened, its image tarnished by the bitter reality of corruption. Corruption, in stark contrast, is the embodiment of moral decay. It is not just about bribes or dishonesty at an individual level, it extends to the abuse of power, manipulation, and deceit that seep into the very fabric of our institutions and societies. This relentless virus can eat away at the core values of a society, leaving its members distrustful and cynical. It breeds disparity, impedes progress, and perpetuates cycles of inequity and injustice. While it's evident that these two concepts are polar opposites, their relationship is complex and nuanced. They are not two isolated phenomena, but rather elements on a broad ethical spectrum. It's the choices individuals make, influenced by their personal values and societal norms, that dictate where they stand on this spectrum. Societal structures and norms can sway the balance in favor of either integrity or corruption. Environments where corruption is endemic can make it difficult for individuals to live with integrity, due to the inherent risks and potential disadvantages. Conversely, societies that value and reward integrity can create a potent deterrent against corrupt behavior. However, a significant issue arises when such societies, while promoting integrity as an ideal, fail to live up to this standard in reality, thus exhibiting a form of societal hypocrisy. Consider a society that emphasizes transparency, fair play, and accountability in its core values, but where backroom deals, nepotism, or other forms of corruption continue to take place. The public image of such a society is a facade of integrity, but the reality is a landscape riddled with corruption. This hypocrisy can be profoundly damaging, possibly even more so than in societies where corruption is the acknowledged norm. In societies where corruption is prevalent and recognized, citizens might be disillusioned, but they are not misled. The rules are clear and well known. The societal norms are apparent, however disheartening they may be. However, in societies that publicly uphold integrity while privately entertaining corruption, citizens are deceived, breeding deep-seated cynicism and mistrust in institutions. The contrast between public virtue signaling and private malpractice can erode the very idea of integrity, making it appear as merely a hollow slogan. This form of systemic hypocrisy can stifle genuine efforts towards reform and undermine the fight against corruption. The challenge for such societies is to bridge the gap between professed values and real-world practices, striving not just for the appearance of integrity, but its substantive and pervasive presence. It's crucial to remember that both concepts, integrity and corruption, are not fixed or absolute. They are fluid, influenced by evolving social values, legislation, and individual decisions. Therefore, there's always the potential for transformation. Through education, legal reforms, and changing societal norms, we can shift from a world steeped in corruption towards one that champions integrity. In the annals of human experience, the dichotomy of integrity and corruption stands out as a cardinal dilemma. Each concept carries with it a connotation, an undertone that reflects our actions and behaviors. The push and pull between integrity and corruption is not merely philosophical, it has palpable implications for our societies. It shapes economies, 
influences political stability, and can strengthen or fracture community bonds. How we navigate this dichotomy, as individuals and societies, will play a significant role in crafting our shared future. Bribery, a prevalent form of corruption, has far-reaching implications on the economy. It fundamentally distorts market dynamics, encourages inefficiency, and undermines trust in public institutions. Let's delve into a few specific examples. Consider a scenario in which an entrepreneur seeks to establish a new business. The process typically involves obtaining necessary permits and inspections from various governmental bodies. In a system rife with corruption, officials might expect bribes to expedite these processes. The entrepreneur, eager to launch his venture, may capitulate to these unauthorized demands, viewing them as a minor, necessary evil, a small toll to pay on the road to success. This route provides a clear and seemingly straightforward solution to their immediate obstacles, a tantalizing prospect for those in desperate pursuit of their business goals. However, by choosing this path, the entrepreneur indirectly reinforces a culture of corruption, embedding it more firmly into the fabric of economic exchange. On the flip side, in societies where such illicit practices are frowned upon, entrepreneurs are expected to adhere to a rigorous, often bureaucratic process. They may find themselves ensnared in complex webs of paperwork, seemingly insurmountable regulatory barriers, and slow-moving administrative processes. These hurdles can lead to significant delays and costs, without any assurance of success. In such situations, entrepreneurs face a challenging conundrum. Opting for corruption might expedite their ventures but at the cost of moral compromise and perpetuating a harmful system. Navigating the bureaucratic labyrinth, on the other hand, is fraught with its own difficulties, often testing their perseverance and resourcefulness. The struggle highlights the importance of systemic reforms aimed at reducing bureaucratic complexities, improving transparency, and fostering an environment that discourages corruption while facilitating genuine entrepreneurship. Another instance involves multinational corporations entering emerging markets. Countries with rich natural resources but weak governance structures often fall victim to corruption. Companies may offer bribes to secure lucrative mining or drilling contracts, trampling over environmental regulations and exploiting local labor in the process. The result is a vicious cycle where wealth is concentrated among the corrupt, while the wider population suffers. Finally, consider the realm of public procurement, contracts for infrastructure projects, defense equipment, or public services. Officials who accept bribes might award contracts not to the most competent or cost-effective bidder, but to the one who offers the largest bribe. This not only wastes public resources but also results in substandard infrastructure or services. These examples illustrate the pervasive and damaging role that bribery can play in economies. It impedes genuine competition, stifles innovation, and fosters inequality. The fight against corruption, then, is not just about maintaining ethical standards, it's also about ensuring a fair, efficient, and prosperous economy for all. Lobbying, in its simplest form, is the act of influencing decision-makers, generally elected officials, to enact policies or make decisions that favor the interests of a particular group. It is a legal and often crucial part of democratic processes, providing a channel for various societal sectors, businesses, unions, nonprofits, to voice their concerns and interests. However, it's when lobbying practices cross into ethical gray areas that controversies arise. A clear example of this fine line can be seen in the pharmaceutical industry. In an ideal world, policy decisions regarding healthcare and medicine would be based solely on scientific evidence and public health considerations. However, pharmaceutical companies often spend substantial amounts on lobbying efforts to sway legislators' decisions in favor of their products, potentially leading to policies that prioritize corporate profits over public health. Another example can be observed in the world of tech giants. Companies like Google and Facebook have significant lobbying presences, seeking to influence regulations that govern data privacy, tax laws, and competition. While they argue that their lobbying efforts help to foster innovation and economic growth, critics warn of the potential for abuse of power and the creation of monopolies. Furthermore, in the realm of environmental policy, fossil fuel companies have a history of lobbying against climate change legislation. Their financial influence can result in policies that favor continued reliance on fossil fuels instead of promoting renewable energy sources, potentially delaying action on climate change. It's important to note, however, that lobbying isn't inherently bad. For instance, nonprofits and advocacy groups lobby for positive change, such as stronger environmental protections, improved public health measures, and human rights policies. The challenge lies in ensuring that lobbying, a potentially powerful tool for policy change, is conducted transparently and ethically.
This includes advocating for robust legislation that regulates lobbying activities, encouraging transparency in lobbying expenditures, and cultivating a culture of integrity among public officials to resist undue influence. In the complex societal narrative, corruption manifests in two distinct forms, each bearing its unique features and implications. The first, traditional corruption, pervades the lower tiers of society. In its essence, it becomes a part of the societal fabric, subtly woven into daily transactions and interactions, as regular as a grocer's small change. This form of corruption is almost imperceptibly blended into the way of life, becoming an intrinsic part of social conduct. The second form, referred to as high-level corruption, is the playground of politicians and white-collar workers. Often cloaked in the shadows of secrecy, this corruption's breadth and magnitude are colossal, overshadowing its traditional counterpart. Unlike the traditional corruption rooted in societal conduct, high-level corruption is less reliant on cultural nuances. Still, it would be naive to disregard the significant role that tradition and social norms play in shaping its manifestation. The interplay between integrity and these two faces of corruption reflects a fascinating discourse on contemporary societal dynamics. The most prevalent form of traditional corruption is often unmasked, and paradoxically, not even seen as corruption. It exists in subtle gestures of gratitude to those who serve society, doctors, teachers, public servants, and many others. It takes the form of gifts or tokens of appreciation, seemingly benign but stealthily perpetuating a cycle of expectations and reciprocal favors. The inherent desire to express gratitude, entrenched deeply in some traditions, could be an origin point of corruption. Refusing these offerings could lead to resentment or misunderstanding, thereby reinforcing this unsaid obligation. This corruption also assumes a functional role, becoming an agent of lubrication in the gears of societal systems, especially when they stutter. There are occasional gaps and inefficiencies in every society, even in the most advanced and well-functioning ones. This is where corruption seeps in, aiding people in navigating these systems' sharp corners more smoothly. However, this gratitude-based corruption often morphs into a mandatory practice, perpetuating a system of expected gratuity. In this context, it represents a visible, clear-cut manifestation of bottom-level corruption. Transforming systems to be more adaptable, eliminating the notion of indispensable roles, and injecting automation could drastically reduce instances of traditional corruption. Systems should be designed with human-centric needs and aspirations at their core, ensuring that a person's desires are optimally satisfied. The incorporation of artificial intelligence can be a crucial component of this overhaul, enhancing objectivity and streamlining operations. Reducing excessive bureaucracy, needless delays, and lag can also serve as significant countermeasures. Establishing legitimate channels for expressing gratitude, as opposed to under-the-table transactions, can act as a deterrent for corruption's normalization. Solving the problem of traditional corruption fundamentally requires systemic changes. By adapting systems to meet the real needs of individuals and creating transparent, legitimate means of expressing gratitude, corruption could naturally diminish. Such alterations present a potent means of combating corruption on a foundational level, demonstrating that the solution lies not in treating the symptoms but addressing the underlying malady. Regarding covert corruption, it is an ubiquitous phenomenon, appearing in one form or another in every nation. It spans a spectrum of practices, from those broadly accepted such as lobbying, to more concealed and hard-to-prove instances. This clandestine form of corruption typically remains shrouded in shadowy ambiguity, eluding detection and concrete evidence. In many cases, positions of power, along with their associated benefits, are given out not based on merit, but on preferences and undisclosed services. These actions often happen behind the veil, subtly manipulating the course of events and decisions. These clandestine exchanges of favors, difficult to trace and prove, create an invisible network of power and influence, a silent puppeteer of decision-making. This sort of corruption is not as readily apparent as its traditional counterpart but is just as insidious, if not more due to its ability to wield influence at higher echelons of society. There are specific instances of covert corruption that involve intricate machinations for embezzling public funds. These nefarious tactics, artfully concealed, represent a particular danger to the fabric of a society. These schemes are often sophisticated, exploiting loopholes in laws and regulations, thus enabling those in power to siphon off resources intended for public goods and services. Indeed, this type of hidden corruption is the most hazardous. Its insidious nature, coupled with its large-scale impact, can lead to the gradual degradation of a country. By diverting funds away from public infrastructure, education, healthcare, and other crucial sectors, it starves the systems meant to foster societal growth and development. 
the consequence is a subtle erosion of the country's foundations, compromising the future for personal gain in the present, and amplifying the discrepancy between the ideals of integrity and the realities of corruption. In conclusion, the conflict between integrity and corruption is a vivid illustration of the discrepancies in contemporary ideas. A society's position on the spectrum between these two concepts is a reflection of its collective values and principles, offering a stark depiction of the state of its moral and ethical landscape. It's also interesting to note how this conflict between integrity and corruption isn't confined within national borders, but manifests on a global scale. As the world becomes increasingly interconnected, the implications of these ethical choices reach far beyond their point of origin, affecting international relations, trade, and even global health. For instance, corruption within a country's government can impact foreign investment, either deterring investors due to a lack of trust in the system or attracting unscrupulous ones looking to take advantage of the lax oversight. Similarly, a lack of integrity in environmental policies may lead to practices that not only harm local ecosystems but also contribute to global climate change. The integrity-corruption dichotomy also surfaces in the realm of international diplomacy. Nations that conduct their international relations transparently and uphold their commitments foster trust and cooperation, whereas those that engage in dishonest or manipulative practices sow discord and suspicion. Furthermore, integrity and corruption can significantly influence public sentiment and societal stability. A society that believes its leaders act with integrity is likely to be more cohesive, with higher levels of trust and cooperation among its members. Conversely, a society where corruption is perceived to be widespread can foster cynicism and social unrest. In essence, the tension between integrity and corruption is not just a moral issue but a socio-economic and political one, with repercussions that echo across various aspects of society. It provides a compelling narrative of the human condition, capturing our struggles and aspirations in an increasingly complex and interconnected world. The challenge is in navigating this intricate ethical landscape and striving towards a global society that values and promotes integrity, indeed and not just in word.